same thing. You're using different muscles to pull the breathing into your body, pull the air in, right? You're not using your, you're not really sniffing. Sometimes people are a little congested and stuffy and stuck up in here. You're pulling the breath in from here. And it starts to make a sound, right? The sound is kind of like an oceanic sound, right? It's also known as the oceanic breath or the breath of the warrior, the victorious breath. It's got a few different names, but it's been used in the um, yoga culture for a very long time. So we're breathing in here. And as you breathe in, you feel the chest rising to meet the chin, and you also might feel a little dropping down of the chin. You guys keep working on the breathing here. Another element to this breath is to feel like an ear-to-ear -ear smile, right? You're drawing in and up here, and you're lengthening through the back of the neck. So take a little moment to try to feel this centering with this ujjayi breath. The heart's rising up on the inhale, and down on the exhale. And as you're doing this ujjayi breath, this is in, But this is also held in. So you might now move your hand down to the lower belly. And as you draw in, you're drawing that navel in. And up, you guys at home, keep going with this breathing. This breathing is so powerful and so effective, right? It comes from the Ashtanga Yoga lineage, Krishna Macharya, who lived to about 100, and I think it was 13 years old or something. I'm not exactly sure, but over 100. He was literally able to change the shape of his rib cage. His rib cage was much more elevated and wider across here. And of course, that did amazing effects on the waistline. So while we're here, just keep focusing on the center and breath, Ujjayi. Making a sound like the sound of the ocean. And using this breath as a meditation. Close the two eyes and turn the attention into one heart breath. And you do your best to let go of all this external stuff around you, right? Your house, whatever it is, you know, your environment. And just start working on your inner house, your inner environment. And when we come to yoga practice, we work on healing our body temple temple within. And we're taking the time to train your mind to not go to the distractions. Don't go there. Keep reining your mind back. Keep tethering your focus back to now. There's a great saying in yoga, and of course I would relate to it perfectly. Right? They say the mind is like a wild horse, and the yoga practice is the reins drawing in right, and creating this control of the wild mind. When you can create control of the wild mind and the two become one, right? This amazing phrase from the Bible, right? When the two become one, yes, the mountain will move, the mountain will move. So we're working on two becoming one, head, heart, and of course, the blossoming from there will become the spirit. So let's keep working on our Ujjayi breath. You wanna add a Kyan Mudra to the mix, that's thumb and index finger connecting, and you imagine the energy that goes down the arm, now that you've connected the fingers, can come back up, right back to the heart, going down and then back up. And sometimes it's so powerful, I can really feel that connection. So you feel the fingers touching very gently, like you're holding the wings of a butterfly. The back of the hands go to the knees, and that will naturally roll your shoulders down. And just again, we're still doing this body scan. Rolling the shoulders down, lifting the heart up. And of course, many people have a hard time just sitting, so we're not going to do this for too long. We'll just Breathe in and breathe out. All these postures we're doing today can be done seated in a chair as well. So wherever you're at in the world, wherever you're at with your body, there's going to be something you can do. And that's why I start with the breathing because we all can breathe. And if we can't, it won't matter anymore. So the first breath, Ujjayi. Victorious breath with an oceanic sound. Second breath. Kapalabhati, a victorious breath, I'm sorry, a skull shining breath, a breath of fire, right? So this next breath, Kapalabhati, means to illuminate the skull, to bring lightness to the body, luminosity, and of course, an awakening, right? So Kapalabhati is the complete opposite breathing, and why I like to bring this to you guys as your whole practice is because this is going to generate
create some fire, some agni, some internal heat in the body. So it's the opposite of this. Now you're going to move down to this. And as you exhale, ch, 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 ch. Welcome on. Some of you guys are just joining in on the Zoom. Great, great to see you guys. Exhale, relax. Exhale, relax. So this is literally the P muscles. Definitely, you're working the bladder, you're working the reproductive organs, you're going to work on healing the body of the lower extremities. But again, I'm using this phase of technique for the mind body connection to create a meditation as well as a great warm up. So we've got our Kapalabhati breaths now. Let's go. Exhale. 
and exhale. Nice, guys. And letting this amazing wisdom of the yoga practice heal your mind, body, and spirit. All right, guys, the next move, grab the knees. We're going to make big circles. We come to one knee, we come forward, back, and then all the way back. And you round the spine like cat cow, and then forward. <laughs> the other way, back, and back. My whole hip just like cronked. Go ahead, guys. It was a whole different sound. It was a crunch and a clunk at once. Good. Let's get the energy going. So good to do this practice. We are 80% water. Right now, imagine you're churning up the water, churning up butter in the body. Good. You go as slow as you like or as fast as you like. And eventually, you do a breath of fire here. Of course, you might not go that fast. Right? You might have to do a few different additions. Because I'm looking at the screen. I might not be uh, doing the right thing with my neck. So you guys, if it feels good, keep doing it. And then, of course, try to maintain your sit bones down. I'm pushing into the knees as I roll around in a circle, really imagining my spine like a stick, straight down through the tailbone, and churning up, right? Stirring a pot all the way around. <laughs> Stir up the pot. <laughs> Good, inhale, and exhale, ooh, elbows, neck, so good. Grab the knees and pull yourself around. And of course, remember, it might not feel good when you start, <laughs> but it's gonna make you feel better. That's one great thing about the practice. Good, and now let's go the other direction. Good, inhale and exhale. And of course, these techniques I'm gonna bring to you now are from Kundalini Yoga, right, from Yogi Bhajan practice with him personally while he was still alive and uh, it's great you know great experience this breath of fire it gets me a little loopy but it's really nice to do when you're home <laughs> inhale forward and exhale back imagine doing the breath of fire in a hot yoga class <laughs> and inhale forward and exhale back see it and if we're doing a kundalini yoga class you inhale sat and exhale nam and sat nam means the truth of your name, right? Living your truth. Oh, we got more joining in on the Zoom. The Zoom, Zoom. Good, let's go the other way. You're grabbing your knees and pulling yourself around. Inhale and exhale. Good, get everything to kind of move around. Churn up the butter. Good, we're almost done. So add a little extra flair. Breathe in and out. Inhale and exhale. Go to the other way. Oh. And if you're doing a Kundalini yoga class, you would do this for three minutes, 11 minutes, 31 minutes, or 62 minutes. Oh, it was rough when you got the 62 minute pose, I tell you. All right, we're not gonna do that today. The next is the camel rock. You're gonna grab your knees, or shins, I should say, in the front, and you inhale, look up. And exhale, tuck the chin in and round the spine. Inhale, rolling forward, look up. And exhale, rounding the spine. Good. You might have pain in your body. I got a new one today. I just put a new one in my body about an hour ago. <laughs> Inhale and exhale. But you yeah, you don't want to feed the pain. You want to believe that you can rock it on out of you. Inhale and exhale. So again, cow ride. So basically, it's cat cow seated. Yoga works. You gotta have some faith. Move. 
up. Move it in the truth. Move in the energy. Stay lifted. That heart breath going. And 
connect to this global connection of home together all over the planet. All right, guys, let's stand up. Before I stand up, let's do one more wrist stretch. Oh, bring the back of the hands down. Because while we're still down, we can do a few more down here. We still got to get our cat cow rounds going. Good, and then turn the hands the other way. And now spread the fingers wide as you can. Good, and in a lot of yoga postures, we're building tables. You don't want the hands out here because it'd be too much muscular energy, right? Straight below the shoulders. Inhale, look up. And exhale, draw the navel in. Try to see your belly up. Inhale, rolling forward, look up. Stretch the chin and chest up. Good, and exhale, rolling the spine, navel in. Inhale. And the breath of fire again. You can go slow or you can start to go faster. Inhale and exhale. Rising that chest more up. Good, and exhale. How are you guys out there? Welcome to joining the Hot Yoga Club today. This is our standard warm up for the class. So if you're used to the class, now you can just get into your moving meditation now. Inhale all the way up. Keep it the same. Exhale, arms down. Inhale all the way up. Drop your back. And exhale, arms down. Moving to the next. Inhale, a back bend. And exhale all the way down the forward bend. Maybe grab the ankles. Give yourself a little pull. And then inhale to the top, all the way up. So I'm using my head, right? I can bend the knees, I bring the head down last, and then you can bend the knees and bring the head up first. So it's almost like the whole body is into the experience, right? Inhale up, exhale down, inhale up, exhale down. Right? Makes sense? And now you got your movie meditation. Five, four, three, Two, one more breath in, and then all the way down. I know many people can't touch their toes, but that's all right. Bend your knees. I'll come to the side position so you can see what I'm trying to do. Hinge at the hips. So it's more stomach on the thighs, chest on the knees, than it is to round your back. You'll never get your feet this way. So I want to bend, back bend, and then forward fold. So I'm going to turn sideways again. Here you want to grab the toes, first two fingers, put on the stasana. And inhale, look up. Exhale, bend the arms and pull. Take a deep breath here, everybody. Okay, good news. There's a huge spider on the wall right behind me. Inhale, look up. Exhale, pull. Is he alive? I think he is. Oh my God. Inhale and exhale. Ah, you know those things that you're afraid of the most will appear in your life the most. I guess it's a good day to maybe the spider is the guru today. All right, guys. Another five. Four, <laughs> three, can't make this shit up. All right, two, one more breath in and pull. Oh yeah, he's huge. He's like the size of my pinky nail. It's not even bigger than that. All right, guys, we've got the next. Step the feet out. Arms over your head. 
palms over the heart. I guess today my challenge is not leaning on the wall. Take a breath, inhale. We're gonna do 10 squats. 10, nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, and one. Now reach the arms forward with the tops. So from the side position, right, the knees over the heels, the tail goes way back, and then you pull those the shoulder blades back. You see, he's right there, it's gigantic. <laughs> guys, bring the palms over the heart, now reach the arms forward, and it's palms up. So this one is really healthy for us today. Take a moment to, with your palms up, imagine that you're throwing something away into the fire. Letting some, whatever it is, worry, despair, stress, kind of burn out of you. Take a deep breath, enjoy the solitude. We'll pay a lot of money to go away on a silent retreat. <laughs> Two fists, hold steady, shoulders back, and now it's tippy, 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 tippy toes. So you kick the heels all the way up, try to pull your shoulders back, and hold five, four, oh yeah, pulse, three, <laughs> two, and one, feet together. I don't know, my legs are really sore today. We got the next, let's get our guard up. So now inhale, arms up. Swing your right arm right to the left, or oh, whatever. You might not know your right from left on the camera. Bend the knees. Good, and go a little up and down. Good, so this is the eagle posture. Good, you can do this seated in a chair, that's fine. You can do it any way you want. You can do it laying down on the floor. All right, so now it's the right leg over the left. And you're rounding above the knees and above the ankles. Leveling off the hips and the shoulders. Take a deep breath, five, four, three, Two and one. Feet go down, arms up, inhale. Now it's the left. Left arm under. Take a breath. Bend the knees. Go a little up and down. Pulse. And then try to get that other leg over. Good. So, you know, just do your best. Don't worry about the details too much. Just breathe in and breathe out. Find your focus. Level off your hips and shoulders. You gotta bend the knees, right? The leg can't wrap around your straight leg. Five. Four, three, two, and one. Inhale, arms up. Back to the right. Right arm under. Bend the knees. And the other leg over. Find the squeeze. So it's a great posture for centering. It takes a lot of focus. And of course, something very popular in the school systems this past year has been something called brain mapping, which is this is exactly doing. Working both hemispheres of the brain, improving your focus, your balance, and your coordination. Three, two, and one feet down. Left arm under. Good. Bend the knees. A little up and down. Pulse. Here again. Bend. And a little lift here. And it's the other leg over. Find your balance. Level it all off. Hips, shoulders, chest. Three, two, and one. All right, guys, we're gonna move on to the next. Half moon pose. <laughs> Arms over your head. Shake it a little side to side, right and left. Good. Now what we're not noticing, of course, is the engagement. The legs are squeezed together. All 10 toes fan out on the mat. You rock a little front to back. And when you bring your arms up, bring them up from the bottom of the rib cage. Try to get your arms a little more behind your head. Straighten your elbows, maybe bring the chin down for a moment, and try to get the shoulders behind the ears. All right, everybody, inhale, rise up. And now exhale over to the right. Squeeze and lean, take deep breaths, and curve the body. The glutes are engaged, thighs are active. You're fanning the breath in and out. And you're fanning, open the lungs, healing your lungs. By just giving them a little space, take some deep breaths in, take some long breaths out, like in the intercostal space between the lungs, between the ribs. <laughs> keep breathing and now keep pulling. And you can see what's happening, I'm counterbalancing. I'm focusing a lot on pushing the hips the other way as I work on pulling up. Don't work on pulling over, pull up first. Rise up, you gotta grow. Four, three, Two, and one, all the way up, take a breath, inhale. Get the shoulders a little more back. Focus on this, curving from here, opening up the bottom of the rib cage. Inhale, rise up, and exhale over. 
to the other side. Keep rooting your toes. Keep lifting your chest. Keep breathing as you lean and reach. Inhale. And exhale. Deep breath in. Deep breath out. Good. Curving the body. Anchoring the legs down into the mat like a tree. Put some roots down. Take deep breaths. Squeeze and lean. Inhale. And exhale. In. Exhale. Never hold your breath. Don't add struggle and strife and positive energy and a breath of life. Three, two, and one. All the way up and now backwards. You can separate your feet. If you got a wall, walk down it with your hands. You can grab onto something, a chair in front of you, and balance your hands on the chair as you just work on the back. Some of you can bring your hands to your lower back, so to support your back. And of course, you guys can go more and more back. So you push the hips forward, roll the shoulders more and more back, start to rise your chest up, and then find your way back. All right, each time you go a little more back, take a deep breath, lift the chest up, curve even more back. Good, and take a deep breath, lift the chest more up, curve even more back. So from here, this is the whole in, and you're actually kind of putting your hands there like, no, no bending in the lower back, you stop it from bending in the lower back. And you just work on extending in the lower front. We spend countless hours slumped with our shoulders rolled this way. I want to encourage you to focus on rolling your shoulders back, lifting your heart more up, <laughs> closing the teeth, smile more. Don't be like, oh, my back, it sucks. No, you got to change your thinking. You got to be like, I am doing something about it. I'm standing on my own two feet, growing a backbone, and standing up for myself, right? That's what you're doing here. Go ahead, a little more back. Good, you can keep going a little more back. And you can keep practicing a little more back, a little more back. Eventually, you'll touch the floor. You got four, three, two, and one. Inhale, then when you come up, reach, use your arms and head, and then exhale all the way down. All right, we got another round here. So you grab the toes, inhale, lift up, exhale, pull. Then you can also put the hands under the feet, padahastasana, inhale, look up, and pull. Keep breathing. Right? It's just like cat cat. You guys keep going. You inhale, longer breaths, exhale, purging breath. You inhale, a long breath, and exhale, I'm trying to crush it. I'm telling you, if you haven't done my class before, I do a lot of these fierce, intense breaths with the emphasis on the exhale, so you can just clean out your cells, like discharge and discharge and discharge. We're working on our oxygen levels in our body, increasing the CO2, right? Increasing the oxygen, the O2, and decreasing the carbon dioxide, the waste. And if you know anything about science, carbohydrates turn into carbon dioxide. Bye-bye. All right, let's move on to the next. Utkatasana. So we have another round of chair position. Pops over your heart. Take a moment to reset here, All right? So I'm gonna be a little dizzy. Turn upside down and you're super oxygenating your blood. We're gonna do another round of squats. All right, everybody, inhale. safe posture, palms up. Visualize what you're letting go of. Deep breaths in. I'm focusing on all my toes up, right? And extending all my fingers forward. Then you extend the tailbone all the way back. And you can feel this is great for the lower spine. Two fists, tip toes. Push your heels straight ahead. Good, maybe pulse. So this is posture that's taking care of your toes, your fingers, your wrists, your ankles, your knees. Oh, those quads. Three, two, and one. Exhale, bring your feet together. 
Take a breath. All right, here we go again. Guard off a little quicker this time, right? Bend. That's it, I got home. We might just stay here. We can sit in a chair and try to wrap the legs. Okay, you have to bend the knees and get the squeeze. And let's hold 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, and 1. Feet down, arms up. Left. And then. Get low. Take care of the ankles. Calves. Achilles. Left leg. Yoga land. Hi, everybody. Welcome. We're going to do some sun salutations next. So uh, feel free to join me. I know those of you watching on the Zoom already know how to do this, which is really great. I can keep a good pace going up today. Those of you at home, of course, do the best you can. I learned these sun salutations in Mysore, India. Of course, I learned them before I went there. I was very blessed to have some great teachers in my life. I learned these sun salutations directly from Patavi Joyce in the south of India, Mysore, India. And I learned that these sun citations have been taught this way since the 1920s. That's the first English recorded book of the sun citations, but to me, 1920s, like the first English recorded book. <laughs> so it just makes sense that it's been around a lot longer. I got to go to the temple, um, the palace in Mysore, and see some of these great 
postures from hundreds of years ago, and it's great, and that's a great practice. You can do it wherever you're at. You don't need a lot of room. You don't need any fancy equipment. You don't even need a yoga mat. If you have a big towel, a beach towel, go ahead and throw that down. I don't know which way direction you face this, face this way. And we'll do our sun salutations. So I'm gonna do five. So you might watch the first one and then join in, or just join in. Here's how it goes. You inhale, reach up, look up. Exhale, forward fold, touch the mat. Inhale, look up, halfway. Exhale, jump back to a push-up. How are you doing so far? <laughs> Good, when you do the push-up, look at your elbows. Keep them over your wrists. Bend the elbows a little bit forward, and that's a chaturanga dandasana. Use your feet, see I'm using my feet, upward dog, and then watch the feet pulling me back to the down dog. So you really start to use the whole body. Quads are engaged, navel is in. You might not get your heels down, Bend one knee and the other knee, shake it out a little bit. Hands spread, fingers as wide as you can, right? All the surface area of your hands as much as you can on the mat. All right, take another breath. And then jump feet to hands. Inhale, look up. Exhale, pull on the legs. Forward fold, head to knees. And then you can push off the legs to get up, because sometimes I'm in that much pain, I have to do that. Luckily, not today. All the way up. And exhale, palms are That was one cycle. Each breath has a movement. Each movement has a breath. And the breath is back to the beginning of class. Ujjayi in. Fold, exhale. Half lift in. Shut to the push up position. Lower down, exhale. Upward dog, inhale. Use those feet. Downward dog. Exhale. Here we go. Let's get five breaths. Chin, back of the neck stretches out. Good, and use your core muscles, hollow belly in. In, in, in. One more breath. Exhale, look forward, jump, feet to hands. Inhale, look up. Exhale, forward fold. Inhale, reduce the arms all the way up. Exhale, palms to heart. Again, inhale, arms up. Exhale, fold forward. Grab the ankles, floor, whatever you can. Half of in. Shut around to the push up position. Jump back. Lower down. Exhale. Upward dog. In. Downward dog. Exhale. Nice. Right, take a deep breath. Imagine. This whole sequence, you can imagine the rope around your waist lifting you up. Good. You have the power of your thoughts. You can imagine what's possible. Or you can focus on what's impossible. One will make you feel good. One might not make you feel too good. Let's take a breath. Look forward, jump. Uh, exhale, fold. Inhale all the way up. Exhale, palms together. I choose happiness just because it feels better. Inhale, number three. Fold, exhale. Take a breath, look up, inhale. Shut around and jump back, lower down, exhale. Upward dog, inhale, up. Downward dog, exhale. You have hundreds of things to focus on. Focus on your breath. Focus on your kneecaps engaging. Focus on your spine lengthening. Focus on your breath. Seat. Not enough? Come on. 
<laughs> right? All up to you. Where do you want to go in life? You invest your time and energy into your body. You reap what you sow. Let's take another breath and hop forward, inhale. Fold forward, exhale. Sweep the arms up, inhale. Palms together, exhale. I chose yoga because nothing else worked. We got one more, inhale. Fold forward, exhale. Half lift, inhale. Chaturanga, jump back, lower down, exhale. Upward dog, inhale. Downward dog, exhale. Again, you have your choices. Maybe headstand's too easy. Still getting bored? 
the practice handstand now. One, two, three. <laughs> Jump forward, inhale. Forward bend, exhale. Ukatasana in. And then we'll exhale. That was a pretty good warm up. Well, let's step out now. Take a breath. Whew. We can go in. Definitely sweating in here. Take a breath. It's all right, everybody. So just straddle. Forward bend. You grab the hips. Roll the shoulders back. Lift the chest up. And then hinge forward. All the way down. First one, bring the hands to the ground. We let the back relax. Hey, our spider friend is still stuck to the wall. <laughs> Got one hand down, one hand up. I might be lucky, he might have cooked in this hot room. <laughs> Good, let's go the other way. One hand down, one hand up. Oh. Good, reach for one ankle and hold. your head down and try to get your feet up. All up to you. They're all great conversions. Anything with your head lower than the heart, especially after all that cardio, and you know, let that brain flush with good oxygen, and a good flow of brain. Let's come up nice and slow. Don't come up quick unless you like being busy. <laughs> good, and now we're gonna do some straight leg triangles. Nice job, you guys. Open the arms out to the side. Pivot the foot out, whichever one you want to do, and start reaching. Start reaching. I certainly know from experience when there's pain, it is hard not to focus on it, not to obsess. It's the ultimate obsession, right? What's wrong all the time? Let's just try to meditate on breathing, making things right again. I'm bracing my weight on my right shin. You can put a block down, right? You can lean on something. You can lean on a wall, right? You can reach for something. Okay? Lean on a couch, it's fine. Do your best. So this is Utita Trikonasana. Back is straight, spiraling on the axis. Hips start to release a little. The legs are straight, and that's the hard part. You have to really engage the quadriceps, especially the right leg, so I don't hyperextend my right knee. I'm gonna take a breath and then go up down. Inhale, look up slow, three, two. And when I here's the trick to get up, you reach for something in the air. Imagine pulling yourself up. Good, so you don't strain the back. And then have the other side, switch the feet. A couple simple fixes. Twist on your way down. So turn first. Turn, turn the neck first. Lengthen the left. Put a little, you know, brace into it, a little swap move. Keep reaching. Good, get the hand down and the other hand up. So the legs are straight, arms are straight, legs are engaged. There's lots of antagonist antagonist muscle groups working together. Quadriceps have to engage, the in. 
it just, you know, gently twist into it. I'm not shaking. This is definitely a challenging posture. Lean on something on the wall. Start clenching your jaw up. You gotta reset. It's a good sign that you're straining a little too much. Take a deep breath. If it hurts a lot, breathe into that pain wherever it is and <sighs> give it an eviction notice. <laughs> Take another breath and exhale, twist. So you could give your pain eviction during quarantine. Go to the very end, final adjustment, twist. All right, remember how to come out. Like you're pulling onto something. Grab and pull yourself up with a hand. Now it's a reverse triangle. The hips square off. Good, and one hand down, and the other hand up now. So it's opposite, I'm gonna turn so I can see you guys. <laughs> Ugh. I think I'll be able to figure out how to do that. There we go. <laughs> it's a tough posture. A lot of the stuff we're doing in these postures are brain mapping, going back to, you know, brain. We spent a lot of early years of my life with, you know, psychological stuff, physical stuff, digestive stuff, health stuff, but I didn't realize how it all could be healed with one thing, the yoga stuff. Keep trying to pull your right hip back. Good. Maybe you bring the hand onto a block or something at home, a shoe or a water bottle. And you see what I'm trying to do here? I'm trying to stack, perpendicular to the floor, stack. The leg is straight, the navel in. So my point is that yoga changes your brain. It changes, not just temporarily. It changes what you activate, what you elevate, what hormones you release. You can do this on a couple of circles. Good, and the hands in the back. But this practice of believing in yourself the whole time you're doing a yoga class is pretty important, right? Training yourself to navigate through your life, weed out the negative thoughts, and strengthen the weak parts of your body, and this posture is torture. I know. I'm here too. I struggle with this one. Take another breath. A little more twist. Good. Now again, look down and use your hand to come up. So you'll wing the arm up. I'm going to switch the sides so I can see you. Square the hips. Almost like you're making a turn of the lung towards the leg. That's in front. The arm up. And then all the way down. Yeah, so it's more of a struggle than other. But here's a great tip. Keep pulling this hip back, a tip for your hip. <laughs> Keep pulling this hip back. Bring the feet wider. Good, turn the spine more and more. Take deep breaths and twists. And if you're working through an injury, I just gave myself today, don't overdo it, you can underdo it. <laughs> just keep doing it, that's the thing. Keep doing it, whatever it is. Keep breathing in, keep breathing out, keep moving energy in, keep moving energy out. Be a conduit for change. Deep breaths. Fire engines. Burning out the garbage. Breathing in. Breathing out. Oh, so intense. I'm constantly working on my feet, my quads, my core, <laughs> my breath. You get a little more twist in this part. Rita, Trikonasana. One more inhale, exhale. All right, come on up. And let's get another straddle forward bends. Bring the feet apart, hands back to the hips, look up, and fold forward. So you can relax the hands, right? You can put the hands onto the mat and the back can relax. And then you can get lower and lower. Take some deep breaths. Just to let the back kind of release. Sometimes, especially when we're struggling with a posture, we can really lock down and clench areas. We gotta learn to soften those areas so they can open and be healed, right? Right now, let it soften. Wherever the pain is in the back or hips or head or whatever it is, just use this forward bend to kind of let it soften and deepen and empty out. All the way down, maybe in the hands. Kind of come up real slow. I'm gonna do another triangle next, bending the knee. So these make the legs really strong for the feet. Of course, I love the name. Be a warrior, not a warrior. So somebody just stay here, just balancing this. Somebody can put the hand on the knee. Somebody can get your elbow to the knee and start to go into your triangle. Your triangle with the bent knee. You can use the left hand, pulse a little into the hip. And of course, somebody can get lower and lower and lower. You can stay here, or you can get the hand to the mat or outside. 
going to extend the side angle. And of course, some of you still can take it to the next level where you get the arm under, find, and I guess I have to commit to it now and start to come up. So you have your bird paradox now. <laughs> Once you get the alignment right, you understand the foundational elements, you can grow. It's like plants, right? Just as much as they are growing up, they're also rooting down. So I'm focused a lot on my roots, especially if I only have one root in the earth, one foot. That's it. And then I grow the trunk, and then I want to extend the branches. Final stage is posture, just looking the opposite direction. Moving your concentration, focus, balance, combination. And of course, don't forget your childlike spirit. <laughs> Let's get the next. It's my favorite part of practice. You mean I get to play all day? Oh, I'll do it. This is Bird of Paradise with the vines. So I have to bend, look forward, and extend. If I can get my gaze forward enough, I can lift that back leg. All a matter of opposition. That's it. Perseverance and persistence pay off for you. All right, how are you guys doing out there? Looks like you're ready for the other side. Relax. So a simple rule of thumb is this hips in line with this knee. All right. The arms, feet would be below hands. So that's pretty good. And then as we go into the twist, as you go down, you twist to go down. So you can hold here, you can get the hand here, or elbow, I should say. Then you can do a beaker triangle or side angle. Up to you guys, you loosen this arm, get the right hand to the right hip, and of course, somebody will go lower still. Try to get the arm under, try to bind, try to step the feet together, and come up. So, something for everybody, go to paradise. Fantastic. So the next, we're going to stand up. And the first one we're going to do, I'm keeping an eye on my spider friend on the wall. <laughs> first thing we're going to do is uh, hold the knee. Right knee in. We'll take a breath. Level hips and shoulders. And of course, balance and postures and yoga go hand in hand because you have to concentrate a lot to balance. Focus. Let's get the other side. Leg up. Breath becomes the meditation. Back to the beginning of class. Inhale here. And exhale. Now your navel's in. There's no belly breathing. Remember, all hard breath. Okay, here's the next. You hold under the knee. Maybe use a towel to hold the foot. Maybe you can grab the foot. It's a Tita Hasta Adan Ustasana next. Right leg up. Draw the navel in. Lift the chest up. Hold in here. So you can go forward, head to leg. Nice. Take a breath. And as you exhale, open up. Look left. Keep rising your chest up. Grow tall again. Healthy trees. Good roots, put the roots down. Five, four, three, two, and one. Take the leg forward. Switch your 
four, three, two, and one all the way up. All right, well, the next is a tree. Bending the knee, take it up as high as you can. Practice toe stand if you know how to do toe stand. Otherwise, we just stay here and weather in the storm. Being strong. Sometimes the leg can feel weakness. I invite you to draw your navel in and use like lift your chest more. Puffing up the chest. Not as easy for you to do while talking, but you just keep lifting. Keep lifting. Keep lifting yourself up. I mean, you are the one been waiting for. Meditate on the good. All you can do, meditate on the good. The more good will come. Deep deep breaths. Expand, take it to a leaning tree. Stand, arm balances, stay here, meditate. It's great, but it's a great practice because you feel stronger. You want to be of your own heart, really connected to your own breath. Getting okay, a little more intuitive about what it means to be truly healthy for yourself. You know, who you knows exactly what you need. Each day, you build your strength a little bit more. Roots down, build a healthier trunk, a healthier tree, a living tree. Just a few more seconds here. Good, now we're coming to a seated position. Pashimatanasana. <laughs> it's all good, you guys. <laughs> and the legs in front, it's already um, 520. I know some of you guys have been dropping out, but it's all good. 
thought, well, it's great to practice with you guys. So we have Hashimatsana, so I'm going to go a little further now. You bring the hands over the feet as best you can. You start to pull, right? That's one. You can bring the hands this way, outside the feet. You start to pull. You bend the elbows. The trick is to, like, back bend into your forearm. Turn it sideways. You want to go up first, and then forward. Up, and then forward, right? So it's like you're trying to get your lower ribs to the legs first, right? Inhale. Good, take a deeper breath in, and exhale. Just lay in the leg for a moment. The next one is taking the right leg up, white tree. That's just gonna rock with me a little bit. Good, take another thing. So the things about lotus is the calf can get in the way. So you might, you know, roll the calf out of the way. Pull the thigh out of the way. And if you can, you bring the foot on top. If you can't bring it on top, bring it on the floor. So you can bring the foot even higher. All right, and this is a half lotus tree. And stay here. Or you can take this hand and grab the other foot. <laughs> and go forward. So I take my hand and I'm pulling it there. Go forward. Good job, you guys. Like my what goes where. But again, there's different levels in the class. And one thing that this getting the bind does, you know, let's turn this way, is if my back is round, I'll never get the bind. But if I can arch my back, not only am I going to get my back in the right position, but I'm also getting my shoulders in the right position, my whole spine in the right position. And that all is coming from the uh, wisdom of the spine. So you do your best, or just pull. Or you just drop the foot down and forward. Either one, they're all good. Take a breath in, back to my podium here. And it's, if you get the full posture, it's Ardha, Bada, Pada. Actually, that's what <laughs> One more breath and exhale, pull. Good, and then switch sides. So some of you at home, you just press and lift up. You cross and lift up. Or you can lift it all up. <laughs> Let's do the other side. Take the left leg up, rock the baby. Loosen up the hip. <laughs> Someone's signing off. Who's signing off over there? <laughs> Bye. <laughs> you know, I'm going overtime, but what a surprise. It's so good. I mean, I could go for hours. <laughs> rock this leg. I'll never get bored, that's for sure. But, uh, when I was a kid, I definitely remember being bored a lot. You know, I'm bored. I went ponies in my backyard, I was still bored. And I remember a Garfield thing, I don't know. I said, be your own best friend. I'm doing a good job at that. <laughs> the yoga definitely teaches you how to be your own best friend, give yourself a hug. So now we're doing the tree on this side. So again, I roll the calf out, and I'm just kind of pulsing here a little bit. And then you go forward, and some of you can get the bind. So we did all the explanation on the other side. Another thing about these binds is the heel is in my appendix. So where's your appendix, right, Josephine? Try to get your heel in your appendix. <laughs> yeah, you gotta get that heel higher. It's right on top of the thigh. It's on top, and then I can grab and pull, right? So the wisdom of the bind puts it all in the right spot. But you gotta go up to get forward, right? Flexion. Back bend into the forward bend. Nice. Good. A lot of these are good for cutting off blood and reducing edema. I mean, I feel the effects of not sweating every day. I've been sweating every day for 20 years. The first time I took a month off, but I'm here still. But I can feel the effects. Swelling in the ankles and the feet. This will help prevent that, or at least alleviate it. Hey, you guys. Glad you guys are all out there in Zoom Town. We're almost done. Take some breaths. Go a little more forward. Good, and then coming up and again, cross and lift, hold, five, four, three, two, and one, and then bring it down. We're going to be zooming every day, four this week. Good, roll the calves out of the way. It's going to be the same ID every time we zoom, so I'm going to make it easy. Good, yeah, push them down. <laughs> Good, and let's do an easy twist. Turn to either side, get the opposite hand to the knee, bring your head and pull. Pull, maybe take the other hand, come out the other leg, pull. 
twist. There used to be a time where we did a bind under and over. Oh, forget that time. Try the other twist. And this is all just to lead you to a nice Navasana. So this is prepping for. I like to do twists and forward bends before Navasana. We'll do half Navasana first, just taking one leg up, keeping one leg down. Navasana is the boat. Right? Your body's like an upside down, downward dog. <laughs> the V from the side. So I'm holding first, so we can pull the leg, head to knee, five, four, three, two, and one, and I'll bring the leg down. And if you can, release the hands and pull the leg in the air. Five, four, three, <laughs> this is only half of it, two, and one. Bring the hands down, put the left foot flat, lift up, pop the head back. Then take the leg, take the hips back through into a half pike. Five. So the pike is my butt's off in that three, two, one. Oh, awful. Turn the other side, left leg up. Head to the end hold. Drop the head back, release the leg, point the toe. Ardha Namasana, hold. Five, four, three, two, and one. Bring the hands down, take the left foot up, butt up, drop your head back. It's a tabletop with breath of fire. And forward half, pike, butt's off the mat. Oh, horrible. Three, two, one. Pull the muscle now, bring the legs straight up. Oh, you lost me. Look up sideways. Now hold behind. Legs up. Try to arch the back. Lift the chest. And when you're ready, release the hands. Ten. Nine. Who's counting? Eight. <laughs> Seven. Six. Five. Four. Three. Two. One. Bring the feet down. Hands behind you. Tabletop. Drop the head back. Good breathing. Forward is 20 dips. Eight, seven, six, I hate these. Five, four, three, two, and one. I have pipes, so I'm going to take the hips. Swing through. Try to lift the chest and try to lift one leg. Try to the other leg. Hold four, three, two, and one. Next, the asana. Behind the knees to set it up. I won't be surprised if all my zoomers drop out now. Lift the chest up and extend the arms. Five, four, I drop out if I could right now. Three, two, and one. Feet flat, hands back, head back, and it's Kapal Bhakti in the tabletop. Dips, 20, 19, 18, 17, 16, 15, 15, 13, 12, 11, 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1, and half pike. Lift the hips, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. I think that is enough. Oh, four bend. Hashimatanasana, arch back and pull forward in. And exhale. Deep breath in. Deep breath out. Good. All right. Well, next, camels. So camel, you're on the knees. You know, we worked all this area. Now we get to stretch it out. Push the hips forward. Sideways. First, all right, we'll do it easy. We just sit. Hold in. Then hands back. And it's a little more. And maybe you can get to your feet. Bring one hand down, one hand up. And maybe you can get to the other side. One hand down, one hand Oh, 
have lots of them. One hand on your neck. If you really got some major back issues, you should be doing it. <laughs> you need this for back issues or for the couch, not for back bending. Sadness and 
holding on to that grief and sadness. And a lot of people breathe so tight, it's like they're in an emotional straitjacket. So right now we're gonna go back to the beginning of class, breathe in here, long deep breaths.
training yourself to be unaffected by that humanity. So no matter where you are, anywhere in the world, you can find the body temple right here and there. I started the class with a thought about the Buddhists, some of them living in exile, and tremendous oppression and suffering. And they still do their meditation. And a lot of their meditation is for the world peace. Imagine all beings everywhere, free from suffering. And do a few of these meditations and imagine that all of these are there, free from suffering. And it starts from you, the microcosm, the macrocosm of the world. Train yourself for things to be rough, but you don't have to be worse. Just work on improving yourself, improving your health. No matter what you want. You can breathe. Let's see.